Hey everybody, Pete from the Wife's Gonna Kill Me podcast. We're here in the booth at PowerCon 2022 in be beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Um, we took the ride down. It's about six hours from where we live. It was a great time. Uh, I rode in a vehicle with Matthew Rodriguez, uh, special guest on Potu quite a bit, and, uh, and of course our own alpha Stephen Bishotti. Stephen Bishotti is a terrible person to ride with. He just fills the car with fart and it's terrible. So this is the booth. If you see Steven right here, he's uh, doing all of his heads and he's having a great time talking with people. That whole thing was full of heads when he got here. So he's doing all right. So, so this right here, this is actually a custom Bolfar uh, Jim Carrey from Mask figure. Uh, absolutely incredible. So good, um, dude. He worked really hard on that. So that's super cool. Oh, Jeremy yeah. DeWitt's in the booth. We've got some awesome prints. Hi! And, uh, so Sweet, man. I love the, that. Our oh, new, our new forehead never, print that uh, Jeremy did. Anthony Valdez did a fun Star Wars yes, one of us. Yes, exactly. we got original comics from Matt Rodriguez. Some awesome stickers cool, man. that we're giving out. So, All right, man. Having a good day so far. So, so this is the booth. Let's go see. Let's go see Travis. The man, the myth, the legend. Travis Balls, as Siri calls him. So, hanging out today, you having a good sale? Uh, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, PowerCon has been a huge success. Where, uh, what's been your favorite thing you've seen so far? Um, uh, Tila. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll talk to Tila and please Merman. Talk, please talk. And Merman. No, no. Ab absolutely incredible costumes. Amazing. Absolutely incredible costumes. Absolutely amazing. Like, I went out of my way to say, hey, just so you guys know you look great. So, um, make yeah. it happen. Yep, so we're going we're gonna to make a loop. We're going to do some interviews. Uh, hoping to talk to Beast of the Mensing Zoic. Uh, we're going to talk to Tweeter Head. We're going to talk to the Four Horsemen. We're going to talk to a new game company that has a little tabletop game that's super cool. Uh, a couple of artists, a couple of authors, and uh, should be a good day. So, uh, watch for all of the fun little things that Chris is going to do with these videos that I make that are dog shit. All right. So, here we are at the Four Horsemen Studios booth. Uh, there's a ton of great stuff in the booth. Everybody knows that. Everybody loves the Four Horsemen. But... The showcase of this entire event. All these people came here for one reason and one reason only. And if you come in close, it's that figure right there. Of course, from the Furious Four, the Batorian figure named after me. <laughs> this diorama is absolutely next level. If you see down in the corner there, Jeremy's just relaxing because he's lazy. He don't fight. Next to him is Pelvicus. And then, of course, right up the hill, Bashadi the Alpha fighting off the evil pussy. Everywhere you look in this is a magnificent figure, a magnificent piece of the diorama. Um, the attention to detail is absolutely insane. And as you work around, you can see the torches on either side. You come through all the different door handles, everything else. There's lit torches in the back hallway. On the back side here, talk about attention to detail. Even the door knockers are the Four Horsemen logo. Absolutely amazing. So, ton of great figures in here. We move around, everybody's getting a chance to see Cosmic Legions. This whole case here. I don't know the names of these figures yet, but they're absolutely amazing. We can't wait to get them. So, uh, some test shots, and there's also some paint samples in there. If you look in the back, those are the those are paint samples because the test shots weren't available. They wanted to show the fans because that's what they care about, right? Awesome big bust. I posted a picture on the Cabal earlier. Uh, show opened at 10 o'clock today. It wasn't until after noon that their line was down. They had that whole back table stacked with figures, 10, 12, 14 figures high. They're almost completely wiped out two hours in. So it's been an amazing show. One of the things they talked about yesterday in the panel is if you come in this way, 
um, all of the cool stuff that is happening outside of just action figures. Um, so you can see, this, these were actually made by a fan. A fan actually put Nate Barch's Mythic Legion's art on a pair of shoes and brought them into the booth. They got people wanting to do skateboard decks with the logo on them. Of course, the pins, the cards, the art, the t-shirts, multiple figures, pillows. Um, George, uh, who G-Con is named after, um, is a design guy um, across a lot of different mediums, not just action figures. Him being on the team, he's bringing in a lot of these different ideas and expanding so people can be all in on Mythic Legions and be more than just the figures. So a ton of cool stuff coming. Hey, got another great booth to talk to you guys about today. Um, this is Dave from Creative Beast Studios, creative-beast.com. He's the owner, creator of all of these beautiful beasts of the Mesozoic. Um, we all talk about how much we love toys, how we grew up on toys. The only thing that I think we loved as much as toys as kids were dinosaurs. This is the best of both worlds. Um, these figures are absolutely amazing. The attention to detail, the paint apps, absolutely incredible. So, why did you start doing this? Why dinosaurs? Because uh, I didn't, I didn't know uh, of any dinosaur toys that I wanted on the market. Uh, I, I've always loved dinosaur toys, and I wasn't interested in anything that was coming out uh, because I like action figures and I wanted accurate dinosaur action figures. So um, uh, I just decided to give it a shot, and see if I could do it myself, and see if there'd be enough interest. And so far, there has been. Awesome. And uh, you started, and your first push was on Kickstarter. Yes. Crowdfunded yeah, your first yeah, one. 2016. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, that, I believe, it started with a smaller Rapids, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, series, yeah. very cool. And obviously, that's grown into some relatively large yeah. dinosaurs yeah. we see here now. Yeah, and, and your most recent Kickstarter was the T the Rex, yes. then, correct? Very cool. Um, been a good show for you? Very Every good time show. I walk by, there's people it's here. Very so. good show. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I ask this of everybody, a lot of times it would be a hard question. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's a ton to look at here. Which one's your favorite? Right now, all of a sudden, there's an emergency. You can grab one and run out the door. What do you get in your hands? It's right in front of me. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, the Arctic Dragon. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, it's, it's a very personal piece for me just because uh, I, I sculpted it as a model kit a while back. I mean, some people that have been following me for a long time uh, know about that one. And I've always wanted to get into doing dragon figures and have the dragons work uh, with the dinosaur figures as far as uh, their, their aesthetic scale. So you can have them on the shelf next to each other interacting and it looks totally natural because uh, I've always had a very strong interest in both. So uh, this is something I've really been wanting to get to for a long time. And uh, I think it's going to look amazing next to like a T-Rex or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, is this is this going to be a, a crowdfund or is this going to be direct from the website? Or I, I'm I'm planning to do this directly from the website as okay. uh, pre-ordered, and uh, now hopefully there's enough interest to get it funded and uh, we'll just go from there. I, I honestly think so when I first when I first saw this picture, the reason I saw this picture was because of other toy line people going, I need that for my Mythic Legions figures right. or my you know, right. and how it fits in because everybody has been clamoring for a dragon. Yeah. And now here you are coming yeah. out of the gates and giving us one. Absolutely awesome. awesome. You know? Thank so you. thank you, thank you. And, and and this is uh, what I'm planning to be a, a mid sized dragon. So I'm planning to do stuff that's a little smaller and stuff that's a little bigger. So. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but I'm not surprised by that because when I look, the, the different types of triceratops, you know, the small, medium, and large. And I was, I said, when I came in and was looking, I'm like, well, I gotta go big. And then I found the, I mean, the, red, the red and black, almost lava looking, just beautiful pin. That's when I ended up picking up. And uh, I'm like, absolutely amazing but again different sizes different shapes all that yeah, stuff absolutely. so yeah. very cool okay. i want to approach the dragons just like i do with the dinosaurs like you know treat them as if they were animals and you know they they uh take on attributes for them from their environment and things like that so different sizes different shapes very cool
awesome. Well, awesome. So, creative-beast.com, um, and figures are available to purchase right on that site right now, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Large selection. Very cool. So make sure you check out that site, Dave. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. Keep up the great work. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't. I can only imagine when you say this isn't the biggest dragon you're going to do yet. What that what that means for the future for you guys. So congratulations on your success so far. We wish you all the best, man. Pete here for the More It's Gonna Kill Me podcast. I'm here with Dave, the creative director for Tweeter Hat. Yeah. Dave, what is it you do to bring these absolutely beautiful sculptures to life? Thanks. So, yeah, as creative director, I work with uh, my partner, Chad, on the business side and decide what we're going to make. And then once we decide what we're going to make, I work with the various artists. We work with designers, sculptors, painters to produce the end prototype. But then Chad takes to production overseas. So my job is the fun part. All right, all yeah. right. So you guys get to sit down in the room, decide what you love, what yep. what, what you know the customers are going to love, yep. and hey, what do we want to bring to life? Yeah, and hopefully they love it. Right. Yeah, sometimes it changes. Sometimes they're going to love this, and they don't. And you're just like, <laughs> well, I, so it's absolutely crazy. So, uh, listeners, as you know, um, Stephen got his Tila in the mail a couple of weeks ago. Oh. So, but because of the size of this thing and the beauty of it, he didn't want to drive around with it, so he didn't bring it to the <laughs> studio. So we threw up a couple shots from your website on the YouTube. Um, but I want you to step aside for it. Yeah. Oh, bring this in, okay? This is the kind of stuff that Dave helps bring to life. Okay. The first and foremost, the enormity of these statues is absolutely amazing. So we live primarily in a six-inch world. We love our six-inch action figures. We Me love too. our posability, you know. Yeah. But when you sacrifice articulation, look at the detail that you can bring out. Yes, no, it doesn't move, but holy shit, okay? <laughs> so this is the Tila that he wasn't able to bring, okay? But you scroll down here and look at the level of detail in these sculptures, right down to every single little piece of armor, nothing has been missed. Now, when you look at something that's this detailed, that's paintless, then you go over to something that obviously it has full paint apps. The, look at the way the paint brings out the level of detail. It's incredible unpainted, so you know the painted product is gonna be absolutely over the moon. So, absolutely amazing. Now, prices on these, they don't give them away. But you know what? That's what art is. And so many people want to kind of sell this type of art short in my opinion. Well, it's not a painting on a wall, it's not this. Yeah. The amount of work that goes into that nobody sees yeah. to make this show up in a box, yeah. absolutely <laughs> amazing. It's part of that and a lot of it too is just, you know, you have to deal with raw materials costs, produce production costs. You work with the factory and at the end of the day, they have to make their bottom line too. And so absolutely. we have to work with what they give us on right. top of what we're spending with our artists, what we're spending on the license, all that adds up. And at the end of the day, you know, yes, we're business, we have to survive, but we're trying to make these as affordable as we can. Oh, absolutely. Like you said, hopefully, when people see it, it feels justified. It's not like, why, why am I spending this much on this thing? It's like, hopefully, look, you go, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, when you see it, when you see them in real life, you're, these people are walking through this show today, Dave, and they're going, man, that on top of my He-Man detail, yeah. it sells itself, yeah. you know? Because you get what you pay for. So yeah, it's it's not a six inch figure. We get it, you know. It's this not is absolutely what? amazing, you know. So, um, do you? So in, in the booth here, do you have a favorite? Are you? Are, well, you're making me do that. I'm going to. Are, are you a are you a heavy Motu, heavy DC, Marvel? Where's your love at? So I love DC, but definitely definitely more of a Motu guy. I'm an '80s kid, so right. I grew up on. So I have the opportunity to work on Motu. It's like full circle, right. you know. Right. Like I, I became more of a DC fan later. Right. I actually like. 80s stuff was my first love. Right. E-Man, Voltron, Thundercats, Silverhawks, like that whole Ninja Turtles, yeah. that whole bundle oh, yeah. was like my DNA. So being able to work on this is great. I have favorite characters, can't lie. Merman's a favorite, Trap Dog's a favorite. I love the monsters, so I bias more that way. And Trap Dog was probably really meaningful for me as an artist because I feel like it's been there's so many iterations of Trap Jaw from the original like vintage toy cross sale art, filmation, which all had a feel to it. And then when 2000X came out, the Four Horsemen kind of like blew my mind. <laughs> right. I had the NECA statue album. When I was working, when I had to work on this, like, how am I going to compete with that? Right. It's just it's hard. I had almost like imposter syndrome, like not like 
I love what they do. It's like it's a piece I hold true in my heart. And at the same time, like I have to make a piece so if people have that, they want mine too. Not to replace it, I want them to be companion pieces. So being able to work on a trap trial that poses against other collection like collectibles that people bought in the past while standing on its own and working with this line was like you see that happen it was really me. That's like why wow, that's like a little bit more my baby than other pieces maybe. That's awesome. Is there is there anything that again we don't want you, we don't want to ask you about anything you can't talk about. That's not our style. Is there anything coming down the pike yep. that you are extremely excited about? Is oh, there anything totally. You, I mean, yeah. So actually, I, I can talk about a couple things because I did a panel this morning, which I know you guys are busy, so it's all good. I won't judge you for not <laughs> being there. But I we did. We I did. was geeking out. I, I was, know. I was getting all my purchases in. Four horsemen. So. They're lying. They took my panel <laughs> away from me. Took a, jerks. I, I, um, I, I stopped and I met with Mandy earlier. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, we'd love to help. And by we, she meant you. Yeah. Um, and I said, but right now, I'm just being a big nerd. I'm going to go buy my stuff, see everything, and then I'm doing it. Yeah, so. no, awesome. So what we showed at the, at the panel was a continuation of this line. We showed Beastman last year, so we showed him again this year. So we showed him rough 3D like mock-up. We did that as a like, right. concept. And then we showed concept art, early concept art for the Sorceress. Oh, okay. So we wanted, we have her just to paint you a picture. We showed off the art of her hovering, so she's about the same height as Skeletor. Arms out with the wings out, suspended, similar to like the suspension gags in like Aquaman and Superman, where we want to show them like elevated and shoot that a little bit. Right. So with the sorceress we have the, the base bottom is the Castle Grey Skull top turret. And then the spirit of the Castle Grey Skull, like the skull smoke is what's aesthetic. Oh that's so we want to kinda of like rope in some nods, it might be a little bit harder on their own. You kind of rope an extra Easter eggs for people, so when they buy the sorceress, it's like that much extra awesome. You when know? you and and Dave, you're thinking about '80s Dave, who fell in love with this stuff. Yep, yep. If you can make people feel the way they did back then, that feeling that you love yep. by incorporating that piece of cancer, you know, yep, yep. that's the you hit the nostalgia that's, field, man. It's that's the goal. About, you know, I'm not so, perfect. I've been doing this for 15 years, but there's always stuff we can learn and. You know, you have to check your ego out the door a bit and go, what do I want? And then what does the collector or customer want? And then find that happy medium between the two. Right. Because if I'm ever like, well, I want this, and it's going against that, like, why am I doing this? I'm not right. doing this for me. I'm doing this for the yous and the other people right. and everyone. It's like, it's for all of us. Yep. And you don't want it to be so far where you're doing nothing that you enjoy at all. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, that happy medium is where it's yep. at. So, now, I want to step over here. I want to talk about these. Yeah. Holy, wow. Okay. <laughs> the... It's a life-size body. Yeah, it's big. Like, I made it so big, I could fit inside of it. It's not like it's this life-size ish. I want this to feel like Dave Batista showed up with a skull mask on, you know? He's there. The, now, is this, a, is this a regular for sale product or is this kind of a one-off thing that you do on top of, hey, we kind of had this already done, we can blow it up, we can create it and then have them so we, for shows and whatnot. So we actually started with the bus, then we did the statue after the fact. So this was okay. the original product. And we did it because we're like, we, we want to, you know, there's opportunities to do something really unique as a standout piece. So for us, we're like, I really push to do a life-size bus. And it's like, a lot of people think you start with He-Man. To me, that'd be a little trickier because like, a dude who's right. mostly naked with a cross, you know, it's like height. With Skeletor, I thought there's like a real opportunity. He looks cool. He's about, to me, arguably the most popular character in the lines. So it's like, you do the cool villain, you do the Darth Vader essentially from yep. this, looks yep. cool. You make him, people love bad guys, people love cool ass sex. I think even people that don't know Mochi would look at this and go, that's striking. I'm a fan of horror, I'm a fan oh, of this, I'm absolutely. a fan of creatures, I'm a fan of Game of Thrones, fantasy, Lord of the Rings, whatever they yep. go. That would fit. It hits my, all on yeah, it. Yeah, hits all that stuff. So and if they have this at the corner of your booth. Yeah, people are walking in and people. It's, it's a showstopper. That was man. by design, it's man. A, yeah. it's a, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Fifteen years has taught you something. It's a great, pro, you know. Even he was gonna be on that program. I'm like, you know, if people take a photo, I want Twitter head in the oh, dang absolutely. background. You know, get my money's worth out of this thing. So yeah. And then of course the the battle cat and he man <laughs> is absolutely insane. Thanks, so man. talk about some of those some of the tricks. They would get people elevated using him. I mean, that's just, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, we, you know, the, the point with this figure in this line, like this, so this is the first piece in a new line. It's going to be a six scale. So the other step is out is fifth scale, so slightly taller. But Twitter is known from doing, like, the DC stuff, mostly uh, traditional classic six scale size stuff. And so we thought that would be a great way to make this a little bit more affordable because if this was fifth scale, it'd be insane. <laughs> and then also give fans an opportunity to have, like, the vintage toy coming to life. Like, yeah. When you think of the toy, this is the toy. If we were to do He-Man and Legends line, it would look different. Like, what would the movie look be more realistic? 
I wanted this to be straight up fantasy, like Rosanna painting of He-Man, you know? And so with that, we also want to do dynamic energy and dynamic posing for it. So it feels more like my biggest inspiration for this thing was the original Alex, Alex Ross of this painting of all the He-Man characters, super vintage, just big giant battle. I'm like, I want that as a statue. So we did that. So also to appease classic fans. A lot of people like are supporting us with our Legends line, which is awesome. But then there's some people that are like, that's not my He-Man, that's not my Skelter. I want that. And that's what this is. Kind of like, you know, not double dip on the collectors, but a little bit of like, give people variety a little bit within this Absolutely. awesome world. Absolutely. So. Well, awesome. So, Dave, thank you so much for taking course, the time man. today, man. Yeah. Keep up the great work. Thank you. All right, Jeremy from My Wife is Going to Kill Me and the podcast is the universe that I am with. Uh, Blaine from NECA. There you go. So, all right, that's it. See you guys. No. <laughs> so, how long have you been with NECA? Uh, just two years. Two years? Yes. You say it's a uh, job of a lifetime? Or? Yes, a yeah. uh, long time coming. I've been friends with a lot of people in the studio, did some freelance work before, and kind of weaseled my way in with, uh, with design. So. Perfect. So, yeah. uh, that's where you're at then in design? Uh, yep. So what have you specifically designed? Uh, so my designs are actually coming out. They're still in okay. development, so can't reveal anything. Oh, but, all right. uh, you know, it's great thing about NECA is we're a very collaborative team. Uh, we're all fans of every IP that we have. You said that your stuff is coming out, so it's not out yet. You can't talk much about it. Yep, uh, my designs, I did get to work on uh, the life size Chucky and Tiffs. Oh, okay. So I got to work on those. Good stuff. Got a hand in Elvira. It's super collaborative in the mm -hmm. studio, so um, we want to make sure that fans of what we're working on get their eyes and hands on it and make sure that we're getting the best detail, authentic product out there. To so practice. would you say that you guys, like, some of you will, like, work on the actual same product? For example, uh, we have Judith Hogue right here behind us yes. as uh, the Bride of Frankenstein. Bride Frankenstein. So like, would just one person sculpt that or you actually uh, There was about seven people who, oh, wow. worked, on, who worked on the Bride uh, from start to finish, uh, including packaging design. We have an animator who does the commercials. Judith actually came back uh, to voice April O'Neil. Right, yeah, and so. that was freaking great. Yeah, yeah. So how fun has she been to work on? She's stuff? been great. I actually got to produce a series last year. We did April's April Takeover yep. where uh, we documented kind of the process of what it takes to create an action figure from design to completion and she wanted to Oh, she! Kind of, I saw all yeah. of her like social media stuff. Yes. She was all over and that And she did stuff. it as a newscaster yes. which was great and took me back to my childhood. Yeah, so she's just been wonderful. She's oh, been awesome. wonderful. Yeah. Good deal. So what... Uh, What's your favorite thing you've worked on, or that you that you've seen in the in the studio? Like, what's your thing? Um, I would have to say, while I'm a huge horror fan, I huge, huge, huge Elvira fan, and I was so happy that we got Cassandra in, and she was really happy with with the figure. Um, so that was a joy to even have like a, a tiny little part of. Uh, also love the Universal monsters, and I'm really excited to see where our gargoyles line goes that was kind of our big surprise we didn't know how it was going to go yeah, that was, one's really been going yeah, over pretty well it, fantastic it? we have the whole clan done and ready to go and we have a lot more coming so super excited, super excited. so uh you guys are all you said you're all big fans how did you get the idea to do the universal monsters well we're huge horror fans wouldn't be NECA without horror we're huge Nur uh, turtle fans uh, and it kind of just seemed like the natural mashup, and we're all fans of the old Playmate toys. Sure. And you know they were. So now that was a sp there, there's been a I guess a critique because people are like, well, why did they choose this turtle to be this? We're not Playmates. And that's yes. where I went with it. I was like, yeah. don't you guys understand that Playmates? You know, Super Seven has like the toys. They're stuff, doing so their thing. They're doing they it probably, great. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, as as kids growing up, we loved the mashups and. We got to decide if we, if it were up to us, now it's up to us, what Absolutely. would we do? Right, and I think, I mean, the things that you guys have chosen so far are beautiful. That wrap, I've got that in hand. It's a work of just, art. Oh, just bulky. Wait till you get the hunchback. The, yeah. the shell opening and, you know, that was, a lot of people when we first announced that, why were you making Leo the hunchback? And then we did the 360. Mm -hmm. And it was mad. The, the, the swords oh, and the shell swords go and in. Stuff, yes. That's be There's shelves in there. There's, yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. Works on it. Yeah. 
So uh, can you tell us much about the latex, latex mask there for the Masters of the Universe stuff? Yeah, so um, Mark, who's actually here, is a sculptor, Mortarheads on, on Instagram, and uh, Randy, who's our VP of uh, product development, was actually a fan and customer of his, and we got the license to do these classic kind of mask recreations of the original figures and he was kind of the no-brainer yeah i mean they and they look just like the vintage yes too, so. yeah it, it is like we took those little rubber squishy head from the 80s <laughs> yeah. yes. and, and blew them up and the the details and the ten, the attention to detail and the little kind of easter eggs in there uh, if you look at like the back of hordak it's got like the screw peg on there <laughs> like he he did a phenomenal job in recreating and, and what was actually kind of cool too, a little plug for uh, the podcasters of the universe, I heard he was actually listening to our show as he was sculpting that stuff. So that's awesome. That's pretty Very amazing cool. to me. So. Very cool. And of course, you know, that ties in with my wife's going to kill me because there's me and Steve, so I mean, <laughs> you guys know how it works. He doesn't, but you guys do. <laughs> so, uh, your, your ultimate favorite NECA figure of all time is? Ooh, that is a good one. Uh... I mean, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say Ghostface. I, there's a special place okay. in my heart for Ghostface. And we did him uh, years ago when Scream 4 came out. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have the license for Scream, so we kind of figured that was something that was never going to get done again. Right. But then we went to uh, the person who holds the, the license for the actual Halloween costume. And we were able to go back and you know do alternate heads, do an ultimate, oh, super perfect. articulated. Uh, so that's so there was a way around. Yes, yeah. Awesome. So I hold that one very close to my heart. <laughs> that's very yeah. good. It's, it's a great figure. Yes. So. Um, and of course, I got to give you guys all a shout out for all of the uh, Pennywise and the It stuff because I mean that's a personal thing for me and the family. The wife loves that stuff. So it's a gorgeous one. stuff. So is there? Uh, I okay. I heard that you guys may have some scented stuff going on with the mask. Is that true? Well, we are possibly definitely fans of the original toys show everything and uh, we are hellbent on making sure that the stinkor mask has that patchouli scent so we are yes. fingers crossed still trying to figure out the logistics and make sure that the factory workers and the people wearing the masks don't pass out right, i was gonna say um, yeah you put it on you're like eh. <laughs> but we are we are trying yes awesome. that's yeah. amazing any uh, let's see what other okay so maybe a moss man someday possibly i think we would you do the, Again, you with do the, the original maybe? figures, you know, we do, um, we're basing them off the original figures mm -hmm. that had a lot of shared tooling, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got the Beast Man I do see the Beast head, Man. Yeah. and that was what was Moss Man on the original figure, Absolutely. and I, that, again, the only way we would do that is to figure out a way to get that flocked and get the, the pine scent. Flocked so, to them. I, hopefully... Man. It's latex mask, so we're just still trying to figure out the logistics. Right, right, right. right. I guess Fingers you don't crossed. want like the big itchy face or whatever, but still, ah, yeah. beauty's pain. Right, and most people, let's face it. I mean, I suppose you could wear them all day long, but you're probably going to end up putting them, you know, on a shelf or yeah. on a mannequin. Or they look beautiful. Who knows? Display. You can do whatever you want with them. I suppose they're yours now. We <laughs> bought them. But uh, so those. Two of them went up on, was it Friday night? Yes, Friday night, uh, Skeletor and Beastman went up signed by the sculptor Mark. Uh, Skeletor is sold out, Beastman's close too, but then they're all going to hit uh, retail late fall. Okay, so uh, Beastman and Skeletor will come back out They will then? come back uh, out just retail. as a standard. Bonus. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome, man. Thank you so much for talking You're very me. welcome. I Thanks appreciate for stopping it. by the booth. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our next little snippet. Uh, I am here with Jason, managing partner for Spiro, and we are in the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom booth, or AWOC, we're going to call it, because that's a mouthful. All right? So, how's the show been so far? Been fantastic. I was worried I was going to lose my voice at the end of yesterday, so we drank a couple of gallons of water, and we're, we're doing great, and we got an awesome uh, response to the, to the prototypes that we're showing off, and I hope you guys enjoy what you're about to check out. So you uh, originally started on Kickstarter, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, we did and, a Kickstarter, and then funded, and that's all oh, good. Yeah. And you got into you got into stretch goals and yes. everything else. Yes. Okay. You no, know, it's funny. We did the. Uh, I planned out a certain amount of stretch goals, and then we started hitting them and unlocking them. And I, I still had the day job at the time, so I was kind of panicking at night, trying to like get everything ready to show off for the next potential stretch goal. So it was a very exciting time, and, and it, was, it went really well. So now, in in this world. 
in, in a normal world, it's a lot of times it can be difficult to calculate timelines. Right. Obviously, exactly. in the post-COVID world, everything's out the books. Right, right. If you, you as a managing partner, this is your passion project. You're right. loving these toys. Mm -hmm. When, when would you love to be able to say, "Hey, fans, you're going to have these in your hand." Ideally, like in a perfect world, I'd like these to be in hand at the end of October. Oh, that soon. We've we've been working on it. Basically, started working on certain elements of it as soon as the Kickstarter itself ended. Okay. Now, just kind of behind the scenes, you have to schedule time with the tooling mold factory, which is one thing. You have to wait in line, and then you have to you know wait in line at your actual production factory to start the production run. So right now, we got in these accessories or, or factory samples, which is cool because I get to see that they they really dialed in the paint and look great. So we're hoping to see some, uh, you know, not painted versions, but you know, something similar to this. That's just the actual, you know, like the white and then a solid red with no with no paint application. Hopefully by the end of the month, and then we'll kind of hit the ground running. We'll, we'll check everything off and tell them. And then they start they start exactly. making them a package. That's absolutely right. awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't do a ton of research before coming here. Okay. So you've got. What were, what were your kind of the initial figures, and then what did you build out from there with your stretch goals? So we started off with six main figures. Uh, two of them were our, our main hero, Hale, and our main villain, Kali. And then we also offered some side characters and uh, two army builders. Okay. And then we went ahead and kind of really plowed into the stretch goals. Right. And we basically unlocked or funded two waves of figures during the Kickstarter. So instead of numbering, you know, waves, we're gonna start calling them the Kickstarter wave, the Primal Battle wave, the Gladiators wave. That way, there's no confusion about right. what number anything is. Right. So now, uh, you guys have done we four inch off figures, with the right? Four inch figures. You know, uh, whenever you're coming up with your, your your pipe dreams, you're like, okay, do I want to like shoot from the sky or do I want to kind of crawl before I start running? And I thought that the four inch scale, which is you know what we probably both grew up. Oh, absolutely. That was the most practical. It's not as expensive for like two little molds and everything. So I, I dip my toe into that that scale, and then uh, Toy Fair got canceled. I believe it was in 2021. Okay. And then I thought, you know what, I have a little bit of extra ones. And I was like, you know what, let's try the six inch scale and see what happens. And so we kind of worked on that for about six months before we actually launched the Kickstarter. And, uh, you know, I hit the launch button and it was off to the races after that. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. The, the, the sculpt detail is beautiful. The way the paint apps draw the detail is absolutely amazing. I gotta ask this question to everybody. It's always difficult. You gotta pick a favorite. Who's, uh -huh. which, what's your favorite? Which, which, which is your go-to? You know, Pale is our main character, and I would say he's my favorite. But after painting this figure, who's our main bad guy, I feel like he is a very, very close second. Just all the, all the, all the paint detail and all the cool sculpting. It's right. like. I was like, okay, good. I made a bad guy. That's a great foil to our hero. Yes. You know? So he's a very close second, but the tail's very close to my heart. You know? That's funny when I write that character for the comic book. His dialogue's how I would speak. Absolutely. Except it doesn't have a Cajun accent. But. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, this. Uh, what's the name of this? This one? is Thane. Thane. So this figure is absolutely. It's oh, just so you. much fun, you know. Yeah. You and, know. It, and it fits in. And you, you always like to. It's. I mean, when you really think about it, it's the Hulk. Right. right. Exactly. You've got because I call that. It's our Hulk. Uh, buck. Yeah. You know? Yep. Exactly. So you've got. You've always got that. You know, this great movie here. You've always got the big exactly. Buck, you know. Yeah. And yeah. it's just absolutely amazing. But I'm telling you right now, the more that I look. It's the blue mohawk down here, man. I just, I just love it. It's, it's funny, we kind of joked about doing like, you know, just a repaint of Kale. And then he kind of became like, you know, he's an actual character in the comic book right. now. So it's kind of fun to see how stuff evolves. And, you know, this this gorilla, I don't know if you remember yeah, Fats Domino yeah. from uh, Showbiz Pizza. Yeah. But like, I I, we, I kind of joke and like refer to him as like Fats Domino, like whenever we're like you know, in the office and stuff. So, but yeah, I feel like even if you don't collect this line, when you see this gorilla, you can kind of work this into your collection oh, no matter what. You know? well, and, and, and it's, it's one of those where the, the size and the, and the quality of the paint app, it's, it can be a show. It can be that one off that everybody goes like, oh, that is that? cool. Yeah. You know? I guess so, a good conversation starter. Hard so as far as the, for people uh, that, that didn't get it on the Kickstarter, 
moving forward, what's uh, what's kind of the what's kind of the retail plan? Where can when people start seeing these on social media and on people's Instagram, they go, I gotta have them. What's gonna be is it website? Guys, you know, other other toy retailers. I think that toy store is probably the easiest place to yep. get it. Uh, we're looking at working, you know, listing stuff on Amazon. We have our own website, but I don't want to list it because we're revamping it right now. Okay. But if you're really interested in getting the stuff that was on the Kickstarter, we have a little QR code that's right over here. And uh, we have these little uh, postcards that we're kind of giving oh, out. Yeah, the, uh, the backer kit QR code is kind of long, so it's like trying to ramble that off. You're like, right. it's www.backerkitbackslash.com. Yeah. So we just did the, that QR code and made it a little bit easier. So people, can people still jump in even now and go to Kickstarter? Cool. Uh, the, uh, the Kickstarter exclusive is sold out, but besides that, everything is, uh, is up for grabs. And which, which one's the exclusive? Kickstarter exclusive. He's actually not here. Okay. You know, we, we shipped all this stuff in, and it's funny because uh, I was like, oh, you know, they're just cardboard boxes, and I was like, oh yeah, we're missing some stuff, but uh, I thought I had an extra paint mask, and these are all duplicate paint masks, and they're okay. kind of getting a little beat up a little bit, but he's actually not there. Um, he is on our on our Instagram website, and on that little uh, back of the Yeah, but he's basically a white thing that ties on with a purple accent. Oh, uh, okay. I have seen that. I, now that you say that, yeah. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. So, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, uh, Jason uh, from Spiro Toys, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Me. I really appreciate um, it. And this is where I normally would say, hey, make sure you swing down to PowerCon. You're not going to see this before PowerCon's done. Um, but you'll know that you missed out by seeing these videos. So next year, make sure you do it. Just get on the Kickstarter. Uh, check it out if you want to get your hands on these. Everything but the exclusive is still available. Um, if you're short on funding, as soon as it comes up on Big Bad Toy Store, watch their website and you'll be able to get your hands on it. Hey, back again, another awesome booth that we bumped into. We are here with John and Lucas from Token of Terror. Token of Terror or Token Terror? Token Terror. Token Terror. Token Terror. Terrible, Games. Terrible Games is the... Yeah, Terrible Games is the name of our publisher. Okay, Terrible yeah. Games website. Uh, TerribleGames.info or TokenTerrors.com. Perfect. So what they've done here is created a fun little game. Uh, everybody loves miniatures. Uh, listeners, you guys know I'm a and d guy. I've only been that way for a couple of years, but you know how obsessed I get and how many sets of dice and how many tokens everything else rolled through saw this was able to meet these guys kind of learn a little bit about what they're doing so they've been nice enough to actually set up a little gameplay action and show us kind of what this game is all about so I'm gonna turn it over to you guys and it said give us a little demo and show the world how cool this is sure so in token terrors battlegrounds you are a warlord that drafts an army of ten mini monsters into your bag you will shake them up at random. The first five that come out are your starting ranks. The remaining five will go into your reserve zones. As your units are depleted, you will populate your reserves onto any available edge space. So, base, so basically at this point, it's all about getting them onto the board, utilizing their powers, and last man standing, right? Yeah, yeah so the Very name of the cool. game is last man standing. and. The way the factions mix and match uh, create a lot of different ways for you to explore the strategies of the game. Basically, with this particular build, the reason I like flying machines and soldiers is because they have a ton of group movement. So I can control a lot of the board quickly without using a ton of actions. Factions like the Goblins and the Elves have some group movement, but not quite as much as these two. And then some of the other remaining factions like the Wyverns have no group movement, right? So but they offer other advantages. It really depends on your play style and how you want to mix your factions up and how you plan on playing the game. So, so like like anything else, uh, in you know D and D you build your character sheet, in Magic you build your deck. In this game, you actually pick the type of creatures you want yep. and roll them out of the bag and and play with them. You can mix and match. Yep. And so, if you wanted flying machines and goblins for a game, you can do that. And so there's and there's you have multiple different types of of troops, correct? Yes. Okay. So there's seven factions in our introductory line of token terrors. Um, and the idea with this is that we spent a ton of time developing the system that governs how this game plays. Uh, it has a really strong foundation, and we've made it so that we can add additional factions forever. So we already have many seasons planned, but we also have pro we actually have a prototype copy of our season two offering, and those are meant to mix and match with any past season before it. So these guys have been busy every time I've walked by. They've got people in the booth. We're going to cut it yeah. so you get back to it. But real quick, where guys, is... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so hit, hit us with the websites again. Yeah, that's tokenterrors.com. Okay. And available for purchase on that site today? Yes. Okay. Um, and the 
So this box, I picked up this this kit earlier. Yep. So now this kit has everything that I need to set up and literally go home and sit play with my son and do this. Yep, yeah. exactly. How many factions come in this? There's seven factions in here. So and this has all of the factions in everything. We are, we are self-contained. Okay. Uh, expansion models will be put out in, in subsequent seasons. Cool. But for right now, we have a, like a skirmish war game that is self-contained. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank I can't you. wait to get home and play this. Thank you guys for taking the time and hey, Thank make you. some sales, man. Yeah, thanks.